Welcome to another episode of the Cisco U. My name is Rafael Levo Ochoa. Remember the days where we can just plug in the computer to any network port in our um, office and everything works. We get full access to the network. Oh, I remember those days. But you know what? Now, with everyone being security paranoid and making sure that, you know what, is this particular computer actually ours? Is it meeting certain conditions based on our policy? We can't do that no more. And the reason why is because we want to make sure that our network is safe. It's like going to your local convenience store and saying, you know what, I like those cookies. I'm not going to pay for those cookies. I'm going to go ahead and take them home. That's not a good way to do things, even though it does sound nice. But you know what, we can't do that. We have to be real. So in order for us to keep our network safe, we have to provide a technology in order to make sure that our network's secure. And the way that we can do that is by using authorization rules on the Cisco Icebox. Now with authorization rules, you can specify conditions that need to be met in order for a user to either get full access, restricted access, or no access at all. So in order to go ahead and make this possible, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that on the Cisco Icebox. So in order to explore the Cisco ICE authorization rules, we need to go through three steps. On the first step, we will navigate to the policy set configuration and create a new policy set. For step number two, we will then create new rules that will be applied to the policy set and then select conditions that we want each rule to actually meet. On step number three, we will verify by having a user log in and see what the results are by looking at the login. In order to start the process of configuring an authorization rule, we need to set up policy sets. Now, in order to do that, we need to go over to the ICE dashboard and select the sandwich menu on the far left and then select the policy option and then select policy sets. Here you will see all the different policy sets that are in the Cisco ICE box. The first two on the top, which are called wired access policy and wireless access policy, I created on my own. In order for the ICE box to be able to differentiate what access policy we're gonna be using on these policy sets as requests come in, we're gonna be using conditions. You can use radius attributes or you can use attributes that you assign statically like device types in order to differentiate the different types of authentications that we're gonna handle. So we're gonna focus in on the wired access policy set by selecting the greater than symbol on the far right. Here you will see all the different configuration options on this particular policy set. Now on the top, if you select authentication policy, you will see that we have an assortment of different ways that we can differentiate different types of users, whether it be a MAC address only user, also called a MAB user, or a .1x user that requires a username and password authentication. MAB users are typically devices that do not support 802.1x, and we can only use their MAC addresses in order to verify them. Notice that for the .1x, we are using a Active Directory system that we've already configured on the icebox called abc.public. If we go down to the authorization policy, this is where we configure our rules. As you can see, there are currently three rules on the authorization policy. One for IP phones, one for printers, and one that is the default that automatically denies access for anyone that does not match the required conditions that I've set up on the previous two rules above. If I want to add a new rule, all I need to do is select the sprocket symbol on the far right and then select insert new rule above. Here I will call this rule wired employee access and on the condition option where you see the plus symbol, a menu will open up, the condition studio. This is where you can use your creativity to say what things do you want to see during the authentication process in order for you to match on, for you to determine whether or not this person will match this rule. In my case, I'm gonna select the attribute editor 
And as you can see, there's a lot of different attributes that I have to pick from. Whether it's identity groups, whether it's location, whether it's the type of device that they're using to log in, the operating system, there's just a lot of different options. In my case, I'm going to be using identity group. And I'm going to select my Active Directory system on the bottom, which is called abc.public. Once I select abc.public, it gives me a menu of different groups that I can go ahead and match on. In this case, I want to use the employees group. Once I do this, I can go ahead and utilize this particular condition in order for me to match on. Now, can I use additional conditions on top of that? Of course. All you need to do is click on new and this will add another condition on the top. Now, if you notice this drop down on the far left, we can specify whether or not we want to match all of these conditions by using the and option, or we only want to match one of these by using the or. Now, since I'm satisfied with using just one condition, I'm going to remove the one I just created at the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and save this by using the option use. And as you can see, I've just created my first condition with this rule that I just created called wired employee access. Now we need to pick a result. What do we want the end result to be when they match this rule? As you can see, I have a variety of different results that I have to pick from. Now, if I want to pick a generic result, I can type in the result that I want to look for. And as you can see, there's one called permit access. This will give the user unfettered access into the network. However, if I created a custom one, as you can see, I created one called wired employee access. I can choose that instead. So once I create this particular rule, I can then go ahead and save it. And then I can go ahead and start the process of testing this out. So for that, I'm going to go on my client. I'm going to go onto the client's network card. I'm going to enable it. And it's going to prompt me for authentication. So here I'm going to enter the employee that I want to authenticate and the password. Once I do that, I can go back to the ice box and go into the sandwich menu again, select operations, live logs. And as you can see, the two recent logs here at the top, these logs indicate that this person has successfully authenticated and that he's been given the appropriate restrictions. So if I select the details file, it will give me a breakdown of what particular authentication and authorization policy we have matched on, including the user that's currently logged in and his MAC address. You will see an option called steps. These are the steps that the Icebox took in order to verify this user. This is an actual good way for you to do troubleshooting and verify what happened during the authentication process. Now, if you go further down, you will also see the end result. We gave this person a restrictive ACL that was configured on the Icebox. Now, in order to see that ACL that we created, we need to know what particular ACL was given to that person. And that can be done by looking for an authorization profile called Wired Employee Access, because that was the result of this particular authorization rule. Now to do that, you go back to the sandwich menu, you go back to policy, you select results, and if you select the authorization option on the left, you will see downloadable ACLs as one of the options. Now notice that I created an ACL called ACL underscore employee. If I open that up, you will see the entries that I created for that downloadable ACL. 
Now, in order to utilize this ACL, I need to attach it to an authorization profile. And the authorization profile that I attached it to was the wired employee authorization profile. Notice where it says downloadable ECL, I attached it to this authorization profile. So that way, when I create rules, like I did here under policy set, and under the wired access policy, I can use that as one of my options. So as you can see, the Cisco authorization rules that we have set up on the Cisco Icebox give us a way in order to restrict access on the network and provide better security. Hopefully this was informative and I will see you in the next video.